you're in for a treat. Phil Schneider has 17 years experience working in the government black projects. He carried a level three security clearance. He's a former government geologist and engineer in the black projects, underground bases at areas 51, S4, and Los Alamos. He's gonna expand your mind here this morning. Please welcome Mr. Phil Schneider. I'm Phil Schneider. Uh, I spent 17 years in black budget programs. Um, government geologist, I was engineer, structural engineer with aerospace applications. Uh, Self-taught metallurgist, became uh, uh, kind of famous in my own right. Um, I basically uh, would have a set of notes here, but they're unavailable <laughs> in all this melee. Up here I have different artifacts uh, explaining uh, some of them are alien metals that have been produced both on this planet and the confines of outer space that are now used in all stealth aircraft. It's all stealth aircraft, for instance, all black jets, uh, what you're seeing of, of black helicopters and the like, uh, the skins and the coatings and the residues that are used predominantly in the, in the aircraft themselves, in the airframes and the, in the rotor blades and the fans and in some cases in submarines, uh, special titanium hulls, in the Phoenix class submarines now. Uh, all these come from, all this has come from alien technology. 1947 is what the public has been told. Uh, something crashed in the backyard in New Mexico, a place called Roswell, New Mexico. Unfortunately, that's what the public's been told. The military's known about the alien question for the better part of 70 years, and they first saw their glimpse of what was going on as early as 1909 in the American Southwest. Now, Army cavalry evidently were chasing some bandits, and they entered this cave. They were holed up in a cave, and what they found in there was flying discs and, and little gray guys and all kinds of weird things, and they didn't know how to explain that, and they wrote them down as best they could, and it's been in secret archives ever since. That's up in the, this in the, down by the Truth or Consequences uh, area of New Mexico. Well, the alien thing is more than just a what I'd call a non-visible threat. We on the surface, first of all, all information dealing with alien or alien reproduced technology or alien reproduced vehicles or any other kinds of things, well hidden from the American public. Our black budget, for instance, garners $1.023 trillion every two years. It's over $500 billion a year. Right now, there are 131 active, deep underground military bases in the United States. There's 1,477 of them worldwide. Each one has an average cost of 17 to 19 billion dollars. Each one is uh, built in the site. Uh, oh, it used to be it'd take a year to two years to build each one, and now they're capable of building a couple of them a year uh, with sophisticated methods. Now, uh, uh, my colleague uh, Al Bielik has actually been on some of the high-speed railways, uh, the Magneto Leviton trains that connect all the deep underground military bases within the United States. He's been on a Mach 2 train and floats off of, floats off of a single rail at a, a three quarters of an inch off the rail and is uh, what you'd call high tech. We have nothing like this on the surface. Uh, the public basically has been totally lied to. We're considered stupid or even moronic in some cases. Uh, it's got to stop. If, if we're going to gain our country back, we must, and I repeat, must, regain, we must instill in our public officials, anybody that goes and does public service, they must tell us the truth. If they cannot do this, then, then they must be impeached or they must, must be removed from office. If this cannot occur, if, if the truth cannot totally come out, the, the, I, there are reasons for secrecy, for instance, but if the truth cannot totally come out, 
uh, what's the use in us having anything called freedom? Okay, now I have pictures here that I'm going to show you during the break in artifacts. And I ask you to kind of look at them but not handle them. I have actual crashed retriever metal from Roswell, New Mexico. It's given to me when I was 14 years old. For instance, I've got other things. I've got pieces, pieces of titan this piece of titanium, a special titanium alloy made for everything from the original SR-71 Blackbird. It's an old hat now. Uh, F-117A is their old hat now. Uh, they're making a whole new class of hypersonic above Mach 5 aircraft that employ they employ extremely modern charged particle beam weapons. They don't even use lasers anymore. Uh, computer enhanced imaging radar. Although it's used in helicopters for public surveillance, computer enhanced imaging radar, and in satellite technology, uh, the brand new kid on the block is a, is a kind of infrared technology uh, where a, a satellite 150,000 miles out in a geosynchronous orbit, or not quite geosynchronous orbit, but but these spy satellites can literally look in and see a dime on the floor, say on your kitchen floor. They have a resolution factor of 99.999961. Uh, this particular piece of metal, I'm going to drop it on the floor here, it'll kind of ring like a bell. You can't break it. Withstand temperatures in excess of 7,500 degrees Fahrenheit. It has niobium in it. It also has miranite in it, element 123. Yeah, please do. Uh, it's in a it's in a non-crystalline form. This is just kind of a dripping off of the out of the main crucible. Here's a crystalline example. It's in the scalenohedral crystalline form. We got this from the large grays. Uh, technology. Uh, this is grown in the confines of, of outer space, which has not quite a super vacuum, but uh, by the way, this is capable of withstanding temperatures in excess of 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's great for uh, certain parts of aircraft. Uh, this kind of material I work with on a daily basis. Up here we have a transparency of transparency of Room Lake. Room Lake is where the infamous Area 51, S4, S2, a CIA base, uh, uh, it was originally a bombing range, a nuclear test site. Uh, it was later become the most secret base in the United States. Um, it employs over 18,000 workers work in shifts of 12 hours a, at a whack. Most of them work in the cover of darkness, like us. We built uh, nine underground military bases there, each with an average uh, uh, capacity, capable of uh, basically a city underground, roughly four and a quarter cubic miles hollowed out underground. They have boring machines, for instance. They have boring machines, for instance. They don't bore. They literally vitrify and melt the rock, deflagrate the rock. It's a very sophisticated laser uh, uh, melting and deflagrating system. It reduces the rock to a powder and then melts the, the remaining rock as a coating on the inside of the base so you don't have to use gunite, cements, and other kinds of things like that. That's all, the, all old hat now. Uh, technology is so just basically the new technology we get is the old hat of the military. I want to be real brief about it. I carried a level one security clearance, the Rylite 38 factor. There are very few of us. There's nobody except myself, to my knowledge, talking like this. <clears throat> nobody. I'm breaking the law. I'm breaking world as well as federal law. I'm coming out and even talking about this to a group of people. I love my country more than I love my life. Two weeks ago, I was shot in the shoulder. I don't want to gore you women out, but I was shot in the shoulder up here. I recently have become friends of a of a uh, retired FBI agent who took me under the wing. He says, I've never seen a person braver than you. And I said, well, 
There's more coming. Our patriot movement in these United States is going to pick up the ball, and we are going to kick the parasites out. First of all, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, a few other founding fathers, Patrick Henry to mention a few, all had visions that these United States was going to live 700 years from where they were standing, and that was uh, somewhere around the, uh, the late 1700s, early 1800s. So you can count this country. This country isn't going to go to a new world order. I believe firmly in constitutional law. I'm not very well skilled in it, and that's my embarrassment. But I'm going to be real blunt about it. The government that is now instilled in ruling over us are ruling as we're serfs, and they're the kings and queens. Now, that's a feudal system. That isn't even a democracy. We are now being ruled by an autocracy and a technocracy. In other words, technical knowledge is rules as king with a feudal type system. Feudal systems haven't been used in the last 350 years, and they're coming back like gangbusters. If we are complacent, if we do not speak out in droves, and I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about a bunch of us getting together and getting on the stump and loving our country more than we love our lives, getting on, some of us are going to get killed. I almost got killed a couple of weeks ago. It hadn't been for a, uh, hadn't been for an FBI, a retired FBI man to risk his life, his career, everything, put it all on the line, and he didn't know me from Adam a week prior to that. Uh, he he, re he listened to one of my tapes I gave up in Post Falls, Idaho, and I'm going to be very blunt about He mentioned, he said that we need a lot more of you, but unfortunately we're not getting anybody. Well, I'm trying to, I'm not the best speaker in the world, but I'm trying to relay to you that we need to get out and seriously get the message out. These shows are great. This, this hall should be absolutely packed, standing room only, and we should be getting the message out to as many people as we can with as many shows as there are, is it possibly to reach. There many is the public. We ought to get on talk shows, we've got to get on, we've got to get on news shows and TV shows, and we have to really get the message out. And I think we're doing it, but it's, it's a little bit slow. In the, in the first part. That's, that's just that part of the, what I want to say. In working with the black projects, I was very loyal. And I was picked because I was very strong mentally. There's a bunch of us that were picked because we don't crack under pressure. We don't freak under pressure, so to speak. Everyday events don't bother us. Now, I was involved in something very controversial, almost totally unbelievable to most of you. Some of you are religious people. I think all religions, all religions have a time and a place, and they definitely have a place in America. Now, another thing I want to reach to you is that during the unbelievable part, I was involved in building another base onto in inside of Dulce, New Mexico, which is Los Alamos Laboratory. It's a biological laboratory. On the southwest part of the Archuleta Mesa, uh, we built an underground facility, a better part of three cubic miles hollowed out underground. Then to the southwest of that, we built, we were we were in the process of the early stages of building. We drilled four large uh, tunnel-like holes. Some of them ran two and a half miles under the surface. Uh, number of the early at that time, number of the original uh, uh, wells or dr uh, drilling uh, machines that were used were 
where um, uh, at the rate of up two miles a day, it was fairly rapid, the equipment kept coming up broken. So we wanted to go down and we wanted to send somebody down there, a human observer, or human observers in this case, to find out what was going on. Well, to our total surprise, first of all, the government knew all about it. They didn't tell anybody. Uh, when I saw Green Beret and Black Beret people encamped inside of our geologist camp, I knew something was up. The gig was up. First of all, I knew all about the alien agenda. I'll explain that in a few minutes. The large alien greys had been encamped there for as best as believed possible about four or five hundred years. It had been one of their internal bases. And we we drilled holes right on top of it. All the stinking air, all the black sooty air came right out as soon as one the first hole was sunk and all this soot came up and well that's when it all all the hell broke loose really, all it started. Anyway, after we drilled all four holes, it took about a, two days to drill all four of them. And when you build an underground base, you drill four basic holes, and then you build you know, called stopes or cross-member holes across, and then you bla use blasting equipment, you know, special blasting equipment by the analyzation of the rock formation, and you literally blast out or tunnel out or, or deflagrate or melt rock out to build the large rooms that are required for this underground base. Well, in this process, I was lowered down the basket of one of these holes, and about from me to this elderly woman here in the front was sitting a seven-foot-tall alien gray. The stench was worse than the worst garbage can you can imagine. Uh, the person was at, or the entity was absolutely horrible. I didn't waste any time. I reached for my pistol. At that time, as an engineer, I didn't have time to carry all the folder, all of one of these big submachine guns that all the sea spray and the yellow fruit and the, all the uh, outer perimeter and inner perimeter security people carried. I carried a little Walter PPK pistol with a nine shot clip. <clears throat> this was in August, late August of 1979. Now, you got a regular suit of clothes. You got a regular clothes on. Plus, you're in a almost like a spacesuit environment, and you're reaching for a gun. It's it's not the easiest thing to do, and then to pop a clip in it and start shooting. And I killed two of them. Yes, they're mortal, and they do die. However, in the process, uh, one of them did this. I rem all I remember is that he just kind of waved his hand in front of his chest and the next thing I know this blue beam hit me and just literally opened me up like a fish and ev uh, burnt, burnt my fingers right off of me and it was some form of electrical force because the kind of like hit, being hit by a lightning bolt burned all my toenails off of me uh, completely crispy crittered my left foot burnt the shoe right off of me um, all I remember is the smoking remains, and I'm laying almost, I'm still conscious, but in and out of, I didn't remember much. And there was a, a green beret that was right behind me that risked his life. In fact, he died. But he risked his life. He shoved me back in the basket and hit the button and took me up. And I wouldn't be alive talking to you today if it wasn't for him. I'm forever indebted. He lost his life. 66 Secret Service agents, Green Berets, Black Berets, crack troops lost their lives because the government, our United States government, lied, did not tell us anything about the alien threat. There's a war underneath there, and I'm d talking dead serious. It's been going on since that time. Since late August of 1979 our military, the Russian military, basically the militaries of the world have been in constant conflict with the outer space alien. The, the small gray, the large gray, the reptilians, the whole thing. There are, 11, there are 11 distinct races of aliens. Two are benevolent. One had to leave here in a hurry because their world is under attack both on the surface of all underground there, the Pleiadesians. They're familiar. Maybe some of you are familiar with that. Uh, would some of you raise your hands? Have heard of Billy Meyer and uh, some of the uh, 
Oh, very good. About half the group. Well, Billy Meyer is one of these lucky people that they figured, well, he's kind of a simple type. We'll show him everything. Well, these are the benevolent aliens, and they've been here helping us. In fact, I have a picture. I have a picture. Let me reach for it here. I have a picture of one of the aliens been working for the United States Pentagon for the last 58 years. His name is Val, Val Valiant Thor. He's right here. There's my father in the background. This old place, the ready room of the USS Eldridge, Albilica has probably explained or maybe even shown you this picture. There's a list of the, some of the notable people in it. They're all the atomic bomb scientists of the day, all the uh, time variant uh, experimentalists of the day, all the top physicists of, of that particular day. This was, in, this was in August of 1943. Now this guy has not changed one iota in 58 years. Started work, he came here, crashed here or whatever. Whether he's under duress or not, he started work for our U.S. Navy and military operations in 1937, uh, either 37 or 38 is what I've been told. So it's for 58 years, this man's been employed, probably under duress. If you don't do as we say, we're just going to use you for alien bait or something. I don't know. But anyway, he basically hasn't changed. He lives for 490 years, what he says his lifespan is. Now, he's supposedly a semi-benevolent, he's a human-looking type person. He has six fingers and six toes, and he's got one oversized heart one lung, giant lung, uh, his blood vessels are bigger, he's got copper oxide for blood similar to an octopus, uh, his brain capacity 300 centimeters greater than ours, he has a thinking capacity, uh, IQ, if, if you were to measure it, would be totally off the scale, be about a 1200 IQ, um, he speaks a hundred languages fluently, alien as well as others, um, he's a remarkable person, I had a chance to meet him one time. Now, um, by the way, he doesn't shake hands. He's kind of in a spacesuit because all aliens, regardless of benevolent or otherwise, they're carrying germs and diseases and bacterium in and on them that are deadly to us. If, if I were making policy, I, I'd quarantine them all because, because how do we not know that some of our diseases like AIDS, Ebola, uh, hantavirus and a few of these other weird designer diseases, as I call them, are not made from the cadavers of some of these aliens as a biological weapon to use against the people of the United States. Well, I'm tired. I'm a tired American speaking out. telling you is kind of a, almost like a brain overload here. Back in 1946, we set off a number, actually four atomic bomb tests at Bikini Atoll. It's a group of islands in the South Pacific. I have an original photograph here with original language on the photograph that shows there is a large alien spaceship off a wingtip of the United States aircraft. It was a drone aircraft right at the point where the bomb was beginning to show a neutron flash cloud. Here's the bomb going off. Here's the airplane tip here, and here is the alien spacecraft. Now, in 1947, excuse me, 1947, questions later, please. In 1947, after Roswell debacle, our military got before the U.S. Senate. They were hauled before the U.S. Senate and says, what's going on here? Well, we didn't know anything about disks until this happened. It flopped in our backyard. Total lie. They lied to the U.S. Senate. They should have been prosecuted as traitors. Anybody lying to a United States Senator or House of Representative, any Senator or House of Representative person, President of the United States, Vice President, any, any Cabinet member, lying 
to the American public is a traitor and should be dealt with in an appropriate fashion. This is actual proof, positive, that this occurred in 1946. Now, the U.S. military knew all about flying disks and flying disk technology as early, thoroughly early, as 1933. Of course, we remember the Germans did too, the Nazi Germans, Hitler and all, all their band, bunch of people. Now, it gets to the big question, if, if all this has been hidden from us, you know, everybody says, well, where's the proof? I've got some of the proof laying on the table. But a lot of you probably are totally skeptical. They say, well, I could be anything. In my hand here, I have a piece of what's called corbamite. It's the heaviest element in the world. Element 140. This piece of material weighs 15 ounces. It's three and a half times the weight of uranium. It cannot be made to emit gamma rays. It cannot be isotoped. It is totally stable. It is used in all stealth aircraft and all Phoenix-class submarines. When combined with other alien elements, it is impregnable. It cannot be melted with charged particle beam weapon. When properly combined in secretive compounds, it can withstand temperatures in excess of 10 million degrees Fahrenheit. It is grown by aliens who have given a good... The other side of the alien question is, some of these aliens have broken off from their mainstream and said, we're not getting a fair shake, and so this is what happens. And I'm talking about the alien graves. Some of them broken away. They're talk about not being popular. This particular piece of metal is an amazing piece of technology. It's capable of being grown in 50 different crystal systems. Now, I'm a geologist, and I, prior to 15 or 20 years ago, knew of only six crystal systems. And there's actually 15, if you count all the alien metals. Now, this is only element 140. If you look at the local periodic table in your local library, it says 104. Somewhere down the line, we've been lied to, we've been cheated. What we have to do is we have to literally ask for the truth. If we cannot ask for the truth, we must demand the truth. We must take it before courts of law in common law systems, and we must demand it. If we cannot do this, our founding fathers told us the only thing left is to overthrow, to get the parasites out. I don't advocate overthrow, but it does look like this may be the only alternative.